Hello and welcome to another episode of Workshop Wednesday. And in today's episode, we've got some problems with our Colchester Master Lathe. So last week we were trying to work, record a Workshop Wednesday video uh, on a project that was using the lathe to do a bit of metal working. Now as you will have seen, last week's Workshop Wednesday was a wire strippers video uh, because of the problems with the lathe. Now while we were doing some metal working we noticed firstly a screeching noise coming from the motor or something down that end, uh, but worse the motor seemed to be stopped starting a lot, which was then putting the digital phase converter voltage all over the place. And we got a three second bit of video of it doing that. It's not the best, but we'll play that now. So having taken that clip that you've just watched, we uh, messaged and spoke to a number of people that know about electrical motors, and they all pretty much said that that wasn't, or they didn't think that was a motor problem. So then we loaded up Google and searched up this problem. Apparently it's quite a common problem and the cause of it is the brake. So during the week, Dad had one of his friends over uh, and they took apart the brake system and came up with a temporary fix. And they also cleaned up the lathe and it looks a lot better. So thank you, Steve. But what we're going to be doing today is taking it apart again and seeing if we can take some measurements and find a more permanent fix. So to get to the brake, we need to take off this back cover, uh, which is held on by two bolts, uh, one here and then one underneath that we've already taken off. Uh, so I'll just undo this. Get ready to hold it. Thank you, cameraman. Okay, I'll just go put this down somewhere. So the brake shoes are inside this pulley here. And during the week we were quite cautious because obviously this is a 1950s machine and would have had asbestos uh, brake shoes. However, they have been replaced, but I'll get onto that in a minute. Firstly, we'll look at how the brakes work uh, from the front here. So you've got this lever and when you lift it up, that would be the on position. And then you push it down, that would take out of the power and it's meant to go down for a break however ours does not go down at all and in this position it activates the break so we've never had a problem with it but we'll also show you from back here now what it's actually doing back here so if i turn this on or move the lever to the on position you can see that has gone down and there's a switch down there, down and back there, back there, uh, that has been pushed down and then act and in turn activated. Now if I drop the lever, you can see that switch has been deactivated and the brakes have been engaged there. So if we now look at a manual, uh, we can see how this is. You can see the brake shoe here on this manual. And then if we go to this other one, you can see how it's held on. So to get the pulley off, which also acts as the brake drum, uh, we have this anky bolt here. Get So if we just take this out that 
I can unscrew the end. And then once I've gotten this off, there we go. Uh, we need to undo that grub screw and then pull the pulley off. We've taken the belts off at the bottom pulley. We can't get them off yet because of uh, this, but they'll come off with the pulley. So I need to now undo the grub screw. There should be enough, and hopefully this will come off by hand and we won't need to use a puller. There we go, that's the pulley off now. And you can see inside the brake drum there. I'll just go quickly put this down. And you can see the original brake shoe has been replaced with this a uh, bit of casting and how this works is in the brake position as it is uh, the square block here opens up the casting uh, which then hits the brake drum if I move this to the on position you can see that it closes up a bit you should turn a bit harder like that that's in the braked position. Now and you can see how that's opened it up. So the problem that we found during the week was that the nut on here had come loose and the washer that was behind it because the nut had come loose had turned uh, and was then taller than the brake uh, sheet and was then braking for no reason pretty much so what we've done is we've got this new washer with a bigger uh, like diameter then we filed off the bottom so that it's flat so that when it's on here it won't turn and we've sanded down the top of it so that it's lower than uh, the braking face uh, and then we've got a spring washer here that we're also going to put on to stop the nut coming undone However, you may be wondering why this is only a temporary fix. Or well, if I can get this washer off. I'll let Dad do it with no gloves on. We'll try to. Yeah, there you go. But it's only a temporary solution because if you look very, very carefully, you can see there's a very slight fracture There you go, just at the end of where Dad's fingernail was, um, in the casting. And eventually, that will crack all the way across, and the whole thing will crack in two. So we want to be replacing that before that happens. So now we've taken some measurements of the drum and this piece of casting, so that we can find a replacement. What we're now going to do is put the lathe back together and make sure that it still works. Right, so we've put everything back together again, just the reverse of what we showed you before. But let's make sure it still works. So there you go, it does still work, however you might have noticed a bit of a background noise which we think might be coming from the brakes. So we would be interested in hearing uh, your thoughts on this problem and your suggestions of where we could possibly get a replacement brake shoe from or what we need to do to get one. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode of Workshop Wednesday. Bye.